Hello chapets. Did you know that as you get older, life gets more complex and overwhelming? Well, you know what? I've taken to writing notes on pieces of paper whenever I, I need to do anything like remember to, you know, I've got a podcast this night or uh, remember to put deodorant on before you go to work because otherwise no one wants to work with you. Um, little things like that. And at Essen this year, um, I was approached several times by designers who said, come and go, go and get my game. And I was like, okay, I have no pen and paper. How am I gonna memorize? So I did this. Go to the Abacus Spiel booth and get Jolly Roger by Sean. Free, yeah. Yeah, do that, yeah. do that. And it worked, and I remembered. And so this is for you, Sean. <laughs> So this is Jolly and Roger, which is a two-player pirate game. Therefore, it's called Jolly and Roger. Ha, <laughs> makes sense, yeah. In this game, players are gonna be fighting for control over these pirate ships to try and get dominance. If they have dominance, they can place their crew aboard. And at the end of this very short game, players will count how many points they got to see if they've won. Because these pirates make points. What do pirates make? Yeah. Points. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, <laughs> is show you how to set this game up, then I'm going to show you how to play the game, and then I'll even show you what I think about this game. <laughs> and then after that, you can decide whether this is booty for your little treasure chest. Arr, just throw another arr, <laughs> boop, boop. So here is the setup for the advanced players. Between the two of you, each player will choose one of the two colours. You either be the black or the white. You'll recuperate the four meeples of your colour. You also recuperate this treasure chest card, which is where you'll be hiding all your scores. And then you'll select a start player however you wish, and you take this little rather cool pirate kind of dragon. It's not a dragon. Where do I get dragon from? But it's a pirate flag. Okay, so that, you take it. You take that. You be the first player. You be the first mate and the first player. In between the both of you, you'll place out the four pirate ships in order of their value. So from three, five, seven, all the way up to nine. As I said, we're playing the advanced version of the game. So you take the, all the cards from the game, which will have the backs which have parrots on. And as you can see, this parrot has a value on it of one and it has this, uh, these swords, these cross swords, which means it has an attack value of one. So you take this whole deck and you'll shuffle it and you will remove 10 cards at random from the game and put them back into the box. And then you'll have your deck here to play with. In this deck will be a variety of pirates from the four different colors, red, green, blue, and yellow, which will correspond with the ships, as you can see. They all have different values indicated in their top corner. And again, they have the cross swords, which is their attack value, but they also have the gold coin, which means it's the value of points at the end of the game that they are worth. There are also these three special cards, which are not used in normal play, but only in advanced play. I'll explain what they do later. So here's our deck, we place this in the middle, it has 10 cards removed at random from it and placed back into the box. And then what we'll do is the start player will start and they will draw five of these cards from the top of the deck and then they will look at them and then they will decide what they're going to do. They need to split these cards into two piles. And then what will happen is player two will get to choose which pile he wants and then play those cards. So here's an example of what player one has split the cards into. He split them into two groups. This group here is a level one green with a pirate skeleton of three. And over here we have a blue number three, a red number one, and Tortuga card. It's Tortuga, yes. Player number two decides to take these two cards here and place them into his hand, which leaves this lot 
for player number one. The player two has picked first and they will get to play their cards first. What player two is going to do, he could place this number one green pirate next to the green boat. This will give him control of this boat. He has the superior forces because there's no opposition here. He could also have played the skeleton there, which would give him attack of three, which would mean he would get dominance all the same. And what he could do with this second card is because he has dominance over this boat, this pirate can then board this boat. And what you do when you board the boat, you place this card underneath your chest and that will count as points at the end of the game. And then it will be player one's turn. There's not much that they can really do apart from place a blue pirate next to the blue ship and a red pirate next to the red ship to gain dominance of these two ships. Because at the end of the game, once this pile is gone, whoever has dominance will get the points marked on these ships. Now Tortuga does nothing at the moment because there's nothing really valuable there. But what player one could have done is player one could have played the number three blue pirate face down. He could turn him into a wild joker, which is only an attack of one, and place him on any boat that he wants, not just the blue boat. This guy can only go on a blue boat, but the parrot can go on any boat. So he could put him there and then put the uh, number one red onto this boat, which gives him dominance of that boat. And then he can play the Tortuga card, which will turn over every parrot card that they have. When this does, this guy counts as a green and has a value of three. And because this is three and this is three, that gives legality. So nobody has control over the green boat. And there you go, that's a round over. What will happen is you pass the first player marker to the next player and then they draw five cards. And they look at these cards and they decide to split them however they want to split them. Let's just say for example, player two splits the cards into two piles like this. Player one decides to take these cards which leaves player two with those. Player one will then go first. And for example, they will take this number three red and board the red ship because they already have dominance of the red ship and that goes into their pile and then they place the yellow there to give them dominance over the yellow ship then we'll be left with the blue player uh, the player two he will place one blue here which give him dominance here which is then he will board and get one point for that card and then he will place his yellow four here for example to take dominance over this ship. And the game will keep continuing like this until your deck is run out. Going back to these three special cards, as you saw, the Tortuga basically lets you turn over all of your parrot-faced cards in front of you. So if you've put pirates in different places because you didn't have the colors that you wanted, when you play this, you can turn them all over and their values will count. Again, these cards can be used as parrots and give you an attack strength of one. Not that you'd want to do it with the skeleton because you can put him on any boat. He doesn't count as any color. He gives you an attack of three and he can't be killed. But he also can't go on, sword, on, on board a boat and he cannot give you any points. But he can be a parrot, but not that you'd use him for a parrot. And then we have the Kraken, this tentacle thing here, whatever you want to call it. When you play this card, you can either play it as a parrot, but you're going to probably play it to attack a player. You choose a boat, so I choose the blue boat, and my opponent will lose the last card of that, that character. So I've lost the number one. I can't kill off the number three because he was played before, but I could kill that one off. And obviously this card will get discarded. Once the deck is depleted, that means it's the end of the game. And what players will do is they will go through their treasure chests and count up how many of the pirates that they managed to sneak aboard the boat. That will give them a set amount of points. And then you'll also look at whoever has dominance over which boat. And again, you'll count the points that are marked on those boats which you have dominance on. The player with the highest score is the winner. So to sum up Jolly and Roger, it is a board game that every scurvy land lover will want to throw a piece of eight at. This is really a nice, quick playing, two player, easy to play, game and it works really well for what it is. Now I say the game is easy, 
it's easy because it's a, the rule book explains it very, very easily as well. At the beginning, you'll have the basic method of how to play the, which is without those three special cards. Um, and so the game is quite light and it, it gets you into it, but then you add those three different types of special cards into the deck and the game becomes interesting. Um, you can play this game casually and do it in about 10 minutes between two players, which are, I, we do a lot here. But um, if you really want to take your time and really strategize on what cards you're going to, to divide into which piles and, you know, and really get into the other player's mind, this game could go on a bit longer, uh, about 20 minutes maybe at the max because it is that type of game where you're dividing these cards up and it's like, well, okay, I, um, I could, you know, what, what am I gonna try and get the other player to take that will leave me with the cards that I want to take to get me the points? That is the, that is the great deep strategy in this very small light game. And then it's how you use those cards. You know, do you want to use it as a parrot and then hopefully get the Tortuga card to turn it over or just just to bump the numbers up or, or you know, it is a real kind of little brain burner of a game. You're really having to think really hard how to get the most points. Should you just be going for the boat? Should you just be at the end of the game trying to get the red boat and the blue boat because they're going to give you big points at the end of the game? Or should you just try and just get as many pirates on board a boat as possible? There's all these little decisions in this tiny little game and it all plays out really, really well. Let's talk about the components. Everything in the game is really nice. The cards are nice, the artwork is nice, uh, the symbology, you know, it, an attack power has the swords, points gives you the coin, and if it has both, it has an attack power and coins. Very nice, I like that. Uh, the tokens for the, the boats are really nice as well. Although, um, this must be a, like a generic kind of insert for the box, because there's no real space for the boats. The big boat won't fit in here, it'd have to just sit on the top. Um, this, but the meeples, yeah, they're okay. Uh, they're meeples, and they work for what they do. It would have been nice to have like little pirate faces painted on them and stuff. Uh, the first player token is nice again, but we don't use it anymore. Um, it's kind of got to the point where it's a, it's a quick two player game. You don't really need to keep passing it back and forth to know whose turn it is because you instantly know unless you need to go pop for pee break over the side of the boat. Yeah. The rule book is clear and you'll pick the game up like that just by reading the rule book. As I said, it does this nice little step procedure. So you learn the base game and then you learn it with the special cards. As I said, you don't really wanna play it with without those special cards. They really make the game really, really, really fun. Um, there's not much more that I can add. This game is really light, quick playing, it's fun. Um, shame it is only two player. It would be nice to have more players involved, but it is what it is and it works really well. So this is my board game geek rating. And all that's left for me to do is to say thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it informative and it has pointed you in the direction of whether this is a game that you should have in your treasure chest, in your ship, in your cubby hole, with your cabin boy. Yeah, um, <laughs> hopefully it has. Give this video a like if you liked it. Um, go and check me out on my website, boardgameseverybodyshould.com. Uh, also, if you want to help contribute to helping me make these videos and hopefully get a better camera and, and stuff like that, then you go to my Patreon and chuck a few pennies my way. And if you want to chuck a lot of pennies my way, I might be able to give you some promos and bits and bobs and t-shirts and, and things. So um, check that out on Patreon. And all that's left for me to say is you don't need to own every single board game out there. You just need to own a few good ones. And hopefully I've pointed you in the right direction, whether this, this is a great one for you. Ha 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 ha. So you may see things which don't actually belong in the game, like this stuff which comes from Heroescape. Um, you may find uh, the model quality will vary due to the fact that they've been testing out different plastics 
to get different quality textures and, and, and trying to get very good high quality plastic models, you may even see that there are things missing from the game which you're gonna get in the game. For example, each character in this prototype comes with a disc. Where it is in the final game, they're gonna actually have a player mat. Um, 28. 28 for, for the four days. Wow. That's it. It's a bargain. Just uh, go, for the love of God, people, just go Eston Gen Con to get there. Yeah, yeah. And then you can feel as sick as Jamie does. You can. You can walk away with all the bacterial diseases. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> why all the Americans, whenever you saw an American, they would fist pump you. Well, this is this, this is Eric question. Martin. <laughs> it's not fist pump, Barry. It's that's not what you're thinking of. <laughs> but it's, no, it's, it's actually Eric Martin.